This is the technological companion to a collection of probability mass functions. In it, we'll reproduce many of the examples found in the video lesson bearing the same name. However, we'll use MATLAB and the TI-84 plus calculator to compute the probabilities rather than working purely from formulas. Cultural engineer applies a new pesticide to a group of 40 cabbage plants in hopes of controlling infestation by cabbage worms. She has already determined that the pesticide has an average success rate of 78%. In other words, she expects that any given cabbage plant will remain worm-free 78% of the time when treated by the pesticide. For a technical report, she must state the probability that exactly three-quarters of the plants in her group will remain worm-free and the probabilities that half or fewer of the plants in her group will remain worm-free. So we can calculate both of these probabilities with built-in MATLAB functions. The first probability involves a single value of the random variable x equals 30. We're asking what's the probability that x equals 30 given that we are conducting 40 Bernoulli trials, each of which has a probability of observing a preferred outcome at set at 78%. The second, we're looking at a range of random variable values of x values, and these are the values x is less than or equal to 20. So when we are calculating the probability with really any distribution in, in MATLAB, any discrete distribution in MATLAB, when we're calculating the probability of a single value of the random variable, we'll typically use the PDF version of the probability distribution to do that, because that's what it des it's designed to do, is to compute the probability of a single value of x. Whereas when we're calculating the probability of a range, we're going to have to find clever ways to employ the Bino CDF or the CDF version of your distribution. Um, what the CDF version of a distribution in MATLAB is designed to do is calculate the probability of all of the random variable values at or below the specified value and then sum them up. So in the case of this example, we can calculate the probability that exactly three quarters of the plants, which corresponds to the specific value x equals 30, are worm free just by plugging in the random variable value of x equals 30 first to the bino, or bino PDF function, and then the number of trials and the probability of a preferred outcome, or n and p second. So we'll enter bino PDF of 30, comma 40, comma 0.78. Likewise, the probability that half or fewer corresponds to all values at or below x equals 20. And so we supply x equals 20, n equals 40, p equals 0.78 into the bino CDF function rather than the bino PDF function. And so if we run both of these values, both of these inputs, we'll see that we obtain probability values uh, that, are, that are correct for this scenario. P equals 0 0.1304 for the probability that x equals 30, and P equals 9.1352 times 10 to the negative 5 for x is less than or equal to 20. We can calculate these same probabilities on a TI-84 plus calculator. So in order to compute the probability that exactly three quarters of the plants will be warm free or x equals 30, we need to use the TI calculator's built-in binomial PDF function. And the probability distributions can all be found by accessing second vars to get to the distribution menu. I'm going to scroll down this menu to find binomial PDF and CDF, and this time I want PDF. And on this calculator, it's set up to have this interactive interface for setting the values of the parameters and the random variable. So trials is in, p is p, the probability of a preferred outcome, and x value is the value of the random variable. So I know that I've got a supply value of 40 for trials, uh, 0 0.78 for p, and an x value of 30. And then if I enter through that, um, it'll paste the input of the binome PDF command into the, um, the uh, command line area of the calculator. 
Now, the binome PDF function looks a little bit different than it did in MATLAB because the random variable is the last input rather than the first, but everything else is in the same order. The other difference is that it's binome PDF with an M instead of bino PDF. And um, the only other thing to keep in mind here is that if you, some versions of the TI-84 or even a TI-83 plus will be set up that, so that if you select binome PDF or CDF or any of the other distributions from the uh, distribution menu, it might return just the name of the function together with an opening parenthesis with the expectation that you're going to supply the input values in the correct order and separated by commas and the comma key is right here on your keyboard. So just if that's the case, just remember that the convention for these discrete probability distributions on the TI calculator are the, um, it's going to be the um, random variable value first, then the list of parameters second. So in the case of binomial, it's X, N, and P. If you hit enter, we'll get the same value that we got in MATLAB and the same one that we reported in the associated example for this, this, this computation. Likewise, if I wanted to calculate the probability that half or fewer of the plants will remain worm-free, so that's 20 and below, well, that's a job for a, PD, or a CDF in, in um, the calculator. We'll get that at the same place. We'll scroll down to binome CDF, select it. We're going to say that we're putting in um, uh, oh, uh, 40 trials, and it's 40. P is 0 0.78 still. And the x value is 20, which, since we're using a CDF, represents 20 and below. And when we paste that to the command line input area and hit enter, we get the correct probability of 9.1352 and so on, times 10 to the negative 5. A fisheries biologist studying a population of fish that includes a subpopulation of rainbow trout. He plans to sample that population with replacement 10 times by practicing catch and release fishing and knows that the probability of catching a rainbow trout is 0.43. He uses the binomial distribution to make the following predictions. So the probability of catching exactly 10 fish of which x equals 7 or rainbow trout is just going to be computed by the bino PDF function applied to x equals 7, n equals 10, p equals 0.43, because x takes on a single value instead of a range. We're using the bino PDF function. The probability of catching 10 fish, of which at most 7 are rainbow trout, this corresponds to a range. So x as less than or equal to 7 is the set of values for the random variable that we are working with. We'll use the bino CDF function to compute that probability. We supply x equals 7, n equals 10, and p equals 0.43 for, for the inputs of the bino CDF function. The next two probabilities require us to be creative with the bino CDF function in order to get it to do what we want it to do for us efficiently. So we want to know the probability of catching 10 fish, of which three or more are rainbow trout. So this is no longer a lower range, but it is a range. We're talking about the values of x that are strictly greater than 3. In the case of this example, since 10 is our maximum number of fish that could be rainbow trout, these would be the x values of 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Now, we could always fall back to plugging each and every one of those values into the bino PDF function and then summing up the results to get the correct probability. But a simpler approach is to recognize that the range of 4 through 10, the probability of that range is simply the complement of the probability of getting x equals 3 or below. And the probability of getting x equals 3 or below is a probability that the bino CDF can calculate directly. So if I want the complement of that probability, I just need to calculate that probability, subtract it from 1. And that's why we see here that our input is 1 
minus the binos CDF of 3 comma 10 comma 0.43 in order to calculate the probability that x is greater than 3 or 4 through 10. Because what I'm doing is calculating the probability of 3 and below and then finding its complement by subtracting that from 1. And then lastly, the probability of catching 10 fish of which more than 3 and at most 7 are rainbow trout well, that's the probability that x is equal to 4, 5, 6, or 7. So I'm going to calculate that probability by using two different calls to the bino CDF function and subtracting them. So here's how that's going to work. Bino CDF of 7, 10, 0.43 is going to give me 7 and below all the way down to zero, the probability of, of x ranging from zero through seven, in other words. That's too much, because I want to know the probability that x is equal to four through seven, not zero through seven. So in order to get the correct probability, I need to take the probability of seven and below, which I've already argued is too much, and then subtract off the probability that corresponds to the values of x that I don't want. And those are going to be the values of three and below. And I'll calculate that with bino CDF of three comma 10 comma 0.43. So the difference between those two probabilities is going to give me exactly what I want. The probability that x starts at four, goes up to five, six, or seven, and then sums those values together. So if I were to execute this code in this section, we'll see that MATLAB computes the probabilities correctly for me. 0 0.0604 for the probability that x is equal to 7, 0.9798 for the probability that x is less than or equal to 7, 0.6898 for the probability that x is greater than or equal to 4, or strictly more than 3 if you prefer, and then finally the uh, 0 0.6697 for the probability that x is greater than 3 and less than or equal to 7. We can calculate the probabilities from our fish example with the TI-84 plus calculator as well. The probability of catching 10 fish of which x equals 7 or rainbow trout is just a job for the binome PDF function. So we'll access that from our distribution library binome PDF, supply a value of n equals 10, because there were 10 fish being caught in a sequence, uh, 0.43 for p, because that was the probability of catching a rainbow trout on any given catch, and x equals 7. That supplies the input binome PDF of 10, 43, or 0.43 and 7, which calculates the probability of 0 0.0604. Continuing, the probability of catching 10 fish, of which at most are 7 are rainbow trout, that's a CDF, with 7 supplied as the input for x. So we'll go to the distribution menu and select binome CDF, 10 trials, 0 0.43 for p and 7 for the x value. And this will give me binome CDF of 10, 0.43, comma 7, which is going to be the probability of the range x equals 7 and below. And the probability of that is 0.9798 and so on. Then we had the probability of catching 10 fish of which more than 3, x is greater than 3 or rainbow trout. We calculated that as a complement, so I want to do 1 minus binome CDF with x equals 3 supplied into it because I'm throwing away 3 and below. So I'll start typing 1 minus before selecting binome CDF from the distribution library. 10 trials is already there, 0.43 for p is already there, but I want to change. 7 to 3 for the x value because I'm throwing away 3 and below. So that's what is 
actualized here when I calculate 1 minus binome CDF of 10, 0 0.43, 3. You get a probability of 0.6898. Lastly, the probability of catching 10 fish of which more than three and at most seven are rainbow trout. That's going to be the difference of two CDF functions. So I'll go to the distribution menu and calculate binome CDF 10437 to give me seven and below all the way down to zero, but then I'm going to subtract off binome CDF, same input parameters except for x equals 3 supplied for the random variable. So binome CDF of 7 and it's binome CDF with x equals 3 supplied. And input parameters are 10 and 0.43 for NMP on both instances of binome CDF. It gives me the probability of 0.6697, rounded. The leadership at a small corporation has decided to form a working committee by randomly selecting 10 of 145 employees. Since 51 of the employees have worked for the corporation for at least 12 years and the rest have not, there is some concern that the committee might wind up with too many junior employees. Corporate leadership has decided that it would be a mistake if 80% or more of the committee is made up of junior employees. By interpreting the process of forming the committee as a form of sampling without replacement and modeling it with the hypergeometric distribution, we can determine how likely it is that the committee has too many junior employees. We'll let n equal 145 represent the total number of employees in the company, and k equal 94 represent the number of junior employees in the company. This will serve as our preferred subcategory. Let lowercase n equal 10 represent the size of the committee, and x represent the number of junior employees selected to be on the committee. The probability that the committee will be made up of 80% or more junior employees represents the outcomes x equals 8, 9, or 10, or x is greater than or equal to 8. Like all of the other discrete distributions in MATLAB, the hypergeometric distribution has a CDF version that's capable of computing probabilities of ranges. But also, like all of the other hyper all of the other CDF versions of the probability distributions in MATLAB, the hypergeometric CDF function computes the probability of a lower range. So if you supply a value for the uh, random variable x, it will compute the probability of the sum of that value and all of the values below it. So we're trying to compute the probability of an upper range, the probability that x is equal to 8, 9, or 10. We can compute that probability by finding the complement of the complementary lower range, which would be 7 and below. So you can see that the code here has us computing 1 minus, so that's the complement, 1 minus the hypergeometric CDF of 7, that's x, comma 145, that's the population size, comma 94, that's the preferred population size, comma 10, that's the size of the sample. So if I execute that, I get 0 0.2490, or the probability that x is 8 or above which is the complement of the probability that x is 7 or below. The 84 plus calculator doesn't have a built-in hypergeometric distribution, but it does have a built-in function for computing binomial coefficients, for computing combinations. And the formula for the hypergeometric distribution is nothing more than just the product of two binomial coefficients divided by a third binomial coefficient. So if you know the formula for the ge hypergeometric distribution, you can still compute hypergeometric probabilities. So we're going to reproduce the hypergeometric example that we just saw in MATLAB. In fact, we're going to ease into it a little bit by doing a simpler example. Let's suppose, rather than wanting to know the probability that the committee was made up of 
80% or more of junior employees. That's eight or more. Let's do strictly eight. In other words, we're going to calculate the, the hypergeometric probability with capital N equals 145, capital K equals 94, sample size of lowercase n equals 10, and a random variable of, of uh, just x equals 8. Well, the formula for the hypergeometric distribution is capital, um, it's ca capital K choose x, so it'd be 94 choose 8 times capital N minus K choose lowercase n minus x. So that is going to be 51 choose 2 divided by capital N choose lowercase n. So 145 choose 10. So let's see how we would enter that in. It's going to be 94 math probability in CR choose x8 times 51 math probability in CR, so 51 choose 2 divided by, what do we need, and I'm going to use parentheses on the denominator, divided by 145 total population choose, so math probability in CR choose 10, the sample size. And that probability would have been 17% about, 17.2122%. Now, of course, if you wanted to compute probabilities of ranges, you could just apply this formula successively to each x value in the range and then sum the results up. And that's possible, but it gets a little bit tedious and, and it gets a little bit repetitive in terms of keystrokes in the ca calculator. So the risk is, is that you'll start making uh, data input errors that you don't catch until you realize you've got the wrong answer. So a, a little bit better of a way to do probabilities of ranges with the hypergeometric distribution in, um, in the TI calculator is to do it as a list operation. So we're going to go to the list editor second list, whoops, wrong, just list, I mean just, just stat rather, and after clicking on the stat button we'll go to the edit menu, select the edit entry, and if you've got a blank spreadsheet that's great, if not go ahead and clear the columns out. In the first column I'm going to enter in the values of x that occur in my range, and in this particular example those values are just 8, 9, and 10. Just a short list with those three values in it. Now, in the header of the next column, I'm going to supply the hypergeometric formula. But in place of x, of the x position in the hypergeometric formula, I'm going to input L sub 1. So what I'm doing is, is supplying all of the data in the first column, the first list, to the hypergeometric formula. And so again, the hypergeometric formula is just equal to, um, it's equal to uh, 94k, choose, so math probability in CR, x. And remember, x is going to be L1, and I'll access that by doing second one, close parentheses, times, open parentheses, 51, size of the other category, 51, math, probability, in CR. Now down here, since I've got this two-dimensional input, I don't need to worry about parentheses, but you might on yours, if it's just if your screen just says NCR, 
instead of the subscripts on the C, you probably want to enter in a parenthesis. So I'll do it here just to be careful and complete. Uh, because what I'm going to do is enter in um, in minus x, sample size minus x. So that's going to be 10 minus x. And remember, what's playing the role of x here is L1. So I'll get that by typing in L1. Close parentheses and close parentheses on the group. And I'm going to divide that by 145, choose 10. 145, math, NCR, 10. Now what that does is that gives me, in the L2 column, the probability of x equals 8, the probability of x equals 9, and the probability of x equals 10. And the probability I want in order to get to the probability that x is greater than or equal to 8 is the sum of those three values. So I'm going to quit out of here, and I'm going to apply one variable stats. So I'm going to go to the stat menu select calc one variable stats, and I'm going to apply those not to the first list, but to the second list that contains those three probabilities that I've just computed. Nothing for the frequency list, and I'm going to calculate it. And I look through these one variable stats, and I've got this symbol here, capital, um, capital sigma of x. Well, that's going to be equal to 0 0.2489. And Oh, 2 point, 0 0.24895 rounds up to four decimal places of 0 0.2490, which is the same result that we got in MATLAB. So that sum of my column is the probability of the range of x values that I supplied. So unfortunately, there's not a built-in hypergeometric distribution for the TI calculator. So to do those computations, you will need to know the hypergeometric formula. And then you'll need to be able to do list operations if you want to compute hypergeometric probabilities of ranges. But it is a doable thing if the calculator is all you have access to when you're needing to compute one of these probabilities, you can still accomplish it. It just takes a little bit more patience. A pharmaceutical company offers an antibiotic they claim to be 82% effective at treating staphylococcus infections. A group of patients suffering from this infection are treated with the antibiotic one at a time. Assuming each patient's response to the antibiotic is independent of the others, we may model the occurrence of the first failure of the antibiotic to treat a case of the infection. In this scenario, we are considering the failure of the drug to treat as a preferred outcome. Since the probability that the antibiotic will not treat the infection for any given patient is 18%, and we get this from the fact that 18% is the complement of 82%, well, we can address the following probabilities. The probability that the first patient, or x equals 1, will not respond to the drug is given by, maybe counterintuitively, p equals GOPDF of 0, 0, 0.18. And so what that's saying is that I'm plugging in a value of x equals 0 for the random variable into MATLAB's GOPDF function rather than x equals 1, along with the parameter value of lowercase p equals 0, 0.18. So we need to think about why that discrepancy is there between the x equals 0 that I supply to the GOPDF function and the x equals 1 that was stated by the problem. And so here's what's going on. MATLAB's geometric distribution, whether you're working with a CDF or a PDF, has a random variable that represents the number of ordinary trials ordinary outcomes you have to experience before you observe the first preferred outcome in the sequence. So that is the second form of the geometric distribution that we've learned about rather than the first where the random variable represents the number of trials required in order to observe a preferred outcome for the first time. So when we say the probability that the first patient will not respond to the drug, that x equals 1 represents the number of trials required in order to observe that first preferred outcome. 
and in order to make use of MATLAB's version of the prob of the geometric distribution, we have to translate that random variable value of x equals 1 down to x equals 0 so that it represents the number of ordinary trials, ordinary outcomes we had to experience before observing the first preferred outcome. So that's why I'm calculating this probability by supplying a value of x equals 0 to the geometric PDF function. And so if we look at the rest, the probability that the second patient will not respond to the drug, well, I've got to knock that value down before plugging it into MATLAB's geometric PDF function, and I calculate the probability as GOPDF of 1, comma 0 0.18. The next few examples involve some ranges. So if I were to ask the probability that the first failure of the drug will occur by the fifth patient, well, in the language of x representing the number of trials required to observe a preferred outcome for the first time, we're saying x is less than or equal to 5. But in terms of what MATLAB wants to see, which is the number of ordinary outcomes you have to experience before seeing the first preferred outcome, that would be represented as x is less than or equal to 4. And so I will compute that probability, since it's a lower range, by supplying a value of x equals 4 to the geometric CDF function. So that's calculating, in MATLAB terms, the probability that x is less than or equal to 4, with GeoCDF of 4, 0 0.18. Next one is the probability that the first failure of the drug will not occur until after 10 patients. In the language of how many trials are required for us to observe the first preferred outcome, what we're saying is that x is strictly greater than 10, or x is greater than or equal to 11. But in order to translate that into MATLAB's terms, terms that are compatible with MATLAB's geometric function, we would really be, be looking at x is greater than or equal to 10. We're knocking x down by 1 because we are having to wade through 10 or more ordinary outcomes before observing the first preferred outcome in this scenario. And if x is going to be greater than or equal to 10, if, um, that's an upper range, so I would calculate that by using a complement. I'm going to take total probability of 1 and throw away x is equal to 9 and below. So that's why, in this particular example, I'm computing the probability of this event by forming 1 minus the GeoCDF of 9, comma 0 0.18. I believe there's one more example where I'm calculating a probability of a range that is double-ended. And that probability is that the first failed treatment will be observed after the sixth patient and before the twelfth. So that corresponds to x values of 7, 8, 9, 10, or 11 if we're letting x represent the number of trials required to observe that first preferred outcome. Then we need to knock those down by 1 if we're going to let x represent the number of ordinary outcomes we have to observe before seeing the first preferred outcome. So the correct range would have been for MATLAB would have been x is greater than or equal to 6 and less than or equal to 10. So with a double-ended range like that, I will deal with the less than or equal to 10 part by calculating GeoCDF of 10, comma 0 0.18. And that's going to give me 10 and below, which I know is too much. So then I have to throw away what I don't want, which is everything below 6. So minus GeoCDF of 5 and below, GeoCDF of 5, comma 0 0.18. Oops, and I just cut and paste error almost. All right, so if I were to run all of these inputs, we'll see that the probabilities that MATLAB computes for us, 0.18 for the first one, 0.1476 for the next, 
0.6293 for the third, 0.1374 for the fourth, and 0.1913 for the last one. Those are the same probabilities that we've already seen in the theoretical version of this example. The TI calculator has a built-in pair of geometric distribution functions. The TI calculator's random variable for the geometric distribution follows the interpretation that it is representing the number of trials required to observe the first preferred outcome. So if I wanted to calculate the probability that the first patient will not respond to the drug, then it requires one trial to see that preferred outcome. And I would enter in um, second distribution, geomet PDF, P is going to be 0 0.18. The probability that the drug doesn't treat and X is just going to be 1. I want to paste that value in and I get a probability of 0.18. Likewise, if I wanted to calculate the probability that the second patient will not respond to the drug, I'm going to supply a value of X equals 2 to the geometric PDF. Make those changes we get the correct probability of 0 0.1476. Now, the probability that the first failure of the drug will occur by the fifth patient means that I will require at most five trials to observe that first preferred outcome. So I'm going to supply x equals five to the geometric CDF. So the second distribution I enter in P equals 0 0.18, X value of 5, this is the CDF, double checking, paste it, we get the probability of 0 0.6293 if you round it to four decimal places. And lastly, or not lastly, we've got actually five examples that we're doing here. If I want to know the probability that the first failure of the drug will not occur until after 10 patients, so it takes more than 10 patients to observe that first preferred outcome, what we're talking about is the range that X is greater than or equal to 11. And so I want to throw away 10 and below. And to do that, I'll do 1 minus the CDF, the geometric CDF, with x equals 10 supplied to it. And I get 0 0.1374. Lastly, probability that the first failed treatment will be observed after the sixth patient and before the twelfth, well, that's going to be x takes on the range of values 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. So what do I need to do? I, I need to take the geometric CDF of 11 to get 11 and everything below it. Paste that and then subtract the geometric CDF of 6 because I'm going to throw away everything below the 7, 6 and below. And that gives me probability of 0.1913 if I round it to four decimal places, which is the same as what I observed in MATLAB. So remember, we just have to, this is going to be true no matter what technological solution you end up using the geometric distribution in, is that you've always got to be aware that there are these two versions of the geometric distribution. And so you should read the documentation of the so software, or if it's a calculator, the, the hardware that you're working with, to make sure you understand which geometric distribution it's working with. Because the MATLAB version and the TI version interpret that random variable in two different ways. You can always translate between them like we have in this example, but you need to be aware of what's going on in order to do that effectively. A fiber optic channel of a communication network has a constant stream of data flowing through it. 
This data is also constantly checked for transmission errors. On average, a transmission error occurs once every 27 minutes, requiring the data to be resent. If more than 100 transmission errors occur in a day, the fiber optic channel will be closed and replaced. A telecommunications engineer is tasked with deciding how likely this is. Since the interval in question is one day, she must find an error rate that is expressed in terms of this time period. She knows that her measured error rate is lambda equals one error every 27 minutes. In terms of days, this is equivalent to lambda equals one error per 27 minutes times 60 minutes per hour times 24 hours per day, and that results in 53.33 errors per day approximately. Since she would like to know the probability that more than 100 transmission errors occur in a day, she computes this probability using, perhaps unsurprisingly at this point, Poisson's CDF version of the Poisson distribution, but she uses a complement of that. So she computes P equals 1 minus plus CDF, that's the Poisson CDF version of the distribution, with a random variable value of x equals 100 and a lambda value of 53.33. So we're throwing away 100 and below to determine the probability that x is strictly greater than 100. So if we execute that code, we execute that code, we get a pretty small probability that p equals 4.0316 times 10 to the negative 9. And the takeaway from that in this example is that if that engineer were actually to observe more than 100 transmission errors in a day, it would be exceedingly unlikely that she would expect to find that happening by accident. There's probably something else at work that would cause for such an unlikely error rate in the day. The TI-84 Plus calculator has a built-in Poisson distribution function, both a PDF for calculating the probability of a single point and a CDF for calculating the range of a point and every value below it. And so if we wanted to know the probability that more than 100 transmission errors occur in a day, like we did in the, in the previous example, we just need to find the complement of the probability that you would have 100 or fewer transmission errors in a day. And that would be the job for 1 minus a CDF of that, that range. And the built-in CDF that we're working with, well, we're going to type in 1 minus, go to the distribution menu to find Sun. CDF. This version of the calculator uses the symbol mu for the rate. Um, other versions might, you, you, you might find that they're using the value lambda. The parameter of the Poisson distribution, whatever you call it, is the rate parameter. And so this is 53.33 errors per day. And then throwing away 100 errors per day and below, we get our probability of 4.0316 times 10 to the negative 9. So it matches the result that we obtained in MATLAB.